lava tumbles into the ocean, it's the encounter of two contrasting worlds, the clash of two dissimilar elements. The resulting reaction is spectacular. Clouds of steam rise from the surface of the water, the molten lava instantly solidifies, and its crust explodes in a shower of sparks. Another great moment in Maurice Kraft's career was Kawaijin, located in the eastern part of Java in Indonesia. The crater of this volcano was filled with concentrated sulfuric and hydrochloric acids. A true chemical factory, this site is both amazing and terrifying. Maurice Kraft decided to explore the lake with the help of a reinforced pneumatic dinghy. The risk of accidentally falling in and dying a most horrible death hovered over him at all times but only by confronting and defying dangers can man advance his knowledge. And today, volcanology owes much to Maurice Kraft and his awesome explorations. Australia is literally surrounded by sharks. The beaches are protected by nets, but hunters such as Rodney Fox don't hesitate a second before setting off after these terrifying predators. He is the most renowned of all shark hunters in Australia. It's off the southeast coast of Australia that Rodney Fox and his team decided to track down the great white shark, the most dangerous of all ocean predators. We're in Spencer Gulf, Dangerous Reef, one of the most feared areas along the Australian coast, a real shark preserve. The purpose of this expedition is to observe the migration of these fascinating creatures. The team must find a few specimens between five and six meters long, catch them, tag them, and then release them. To attract them, the hunters pour chum, pieces of tuna in blood, into the water. It takes only a few minutes for the water around the boat to be teeming with sharks. These creatures have the reputation of being very aggressive and attacking without hesitation. Here, however, the sharks seem very cautious. For two hours, they circle the bait without attacking. When they finally come in for the attack, it's overwhelming. Made crazy by the scent of the blood, the sharks swallow everything that's in their way. They're more confident now, which is what the team has been waiting for. Rodney Fox decides to go down in a shark-proof cage. Constructed of solid iron bars, these cages are theoretically the perfect protection for divers, capable of resisting even these fearsome creatures. But when the sharks become extremely agitated and uncontrollable, their anger and strength enable them to demolish even these solid barriers. There are now four sharks of about a ton apiece circling the cage. Unleashing their fury, they attack everything they find. The cage's bars begin to show the damage caused by these ferocious onslaughts. Suddenly, all hell breaks loose. The sharks, in their frenzy, have managed to twist one of the bars and are able to enter the cage. Rodney Fox decides it's time to resurface. The team chooses the largest shark, more than five meters long, as their first specimen. But before they can tag it, they have to catch it. To do this, they prepare a fishing line with a huge hook hidden in a chunk of bait. Once the shark bites, the battle can begin. The boat roars to life as the team gets ready for a struggle.
The technique is a bit tricky, as they mustn't allow the shark to change direction. If the line becomes slack, the shark will surely take advantage to gain speed and power, and the line will snap. During this fight that lasts a good two hours, the shark mustn't be given the slightest opportunity to escape. The line must stay taut to bring up the beast, meter by meter, to the side of the boat. The procedure was perfectly executed. The shark is only a few meters from the boat. 23 minutes. 23 minutes.